Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. During a recent conference, South African National Space Agency CEO Dr. Val Sami outlined some of the challenges and opportunities facing the space sector. Rebecca Campbell joins me to discuss the highlights. Hi, Rebecca. What were some of the themes discussed during the conference? Well, I think a key theme which we're unfortunately going to have to come back to is lack of money. Uh, I'll, as I say, I'll come back to that uh, a bit later, uh, but it is a, a concern for the entire space sector that the, there's a feeling that the budget is not big enough, uh, not only to meet future needs, but even to meet current requirements. There are other themes as well. Um, there is the theme of actual opportunities, significant opportunities for the South African space sector, and also the need to probably uh, revise South African legislation regarding space. So to start with the last first, uh, there are presentations by officials from the Department of Trade and Industry who are involved with the South African Council on Space Affairs, which is South Africa's regulatory body for space activities. And uh, there is a feeling in their circles that South Africa's space legislation must now be brought into line with the international treaties that the country has signed. You know, South, South Africa signed four of the international space conventions, of which the best known one is the Outer Space uh, Treaty, and the others are more technical treaties like the Convention on the Rescue and Return of Astronauts and the, uh, the uh, uh, necessary uh, Convention on Liabilities, so that if a South African spacecraft falls the head of someone in Afghanistan after a bad re-entry, South Africa will pay compensation, that kind of thing. Uh, so there was thus the, the regulatory issues, the opportunities, cooperation with other countries in Africa and beyond, and the, the question of funding. Those, I think, were, oh, of course, and the fourth theme was the actual application of space for development in South Africa, the use of space imagery for many, many applications to help development, uh, social development, economic development in South Africa, satellite imagery to study the condition of South Africa's water bo bodies, land use, agriculture, and so on and so forth. The applications are very many indeed, and they're being done now, and the opportunity exists to do them on a much greater scale in the future. The local Earth observation satellite program in particular is being negatively affected by the lack of funding. Oh yes, yes, that's a, that is a big problem. You see, the South African National Space Agency has been given responsibility to develop South Africa's next Earth observation satellite, currently known simply as EOSAT-1, EO Earth Observation. The funding for this has been operating at an inadequate level, meaning that the program is dragging out over a longer time period than originally expected. At one point they hoped to launch this satellite in 2019, next year. But now the earliest it looks like uh, it could be done is 2020 and maybe not even until 2021. The problem is space is a, an area where technology is moving very fast. Uh, so it's not impossible that EOSAT-1 could end up as outdated before it's actually launched. It's not just the satellite. You have to have a whole ground infrastructure as well. So the uh, mission control, what they call the satellite ground segment, which includes mission control and, and the uh, reception of that and so on, uh, that also has to be constructed. There has to be a, uh, the a capability to analyze the data sent by the satellite. So some work has to be done there. Uh, there is the need to modernize the assembly and testing facility at Ho Hotec uh, in, in the Western Cape, which is built in the 1980s and badly needs updating. That has to be properly funded yet. 
And then, of course, there's the question of paying for the launch. The launch is not a Sansa problem. That's a Department of Science and Technology issue. But it's very expensive. 350 million rand, 400 million rand. Uh, all these things have got to be funded uh, and in good time to bring the program together. On the other hand, the program is attracting interest from other countries that want to cooperate with South Africa and co-develop uh, satellites, which makes it absolutely essential that this satellite be finished and launched. Otherwise, South Africa will lose this interest, lose this opportunity for international cooperation. In, in a sector which is becoming big business, uh, there could be as many as uh, 3,000 satellites launched in the next few years, ranging enormously in size, of course, from little nanosats, which could be about this size, uh, to very substantial major communication satellites. But the sector is on the, uh, appears to be on the verge of a global boom. So if South Africa gets EOSAT-1 done correctly, then there are great opportunities to take part in, 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 in this industry. What are some of the other opportunities for the space sector? Well, there the, are the two things. The, the ones that involve SANSA and the ones that involve the private sector, because South Africa has a private sector space industry. It's, it's very small, but it's dynamic and it's making its mark. And currently, you have the uh, SCS Aerospace Group in Stenbosch, for example, who are focusing on nanosatellites uh, and nanosatellite constellations. Technology is moving so fast that the ca capability of nanosatellites has improved dramatically in the past few years. The uh, SCS's first uh, nanosatellite to get into orbit, InSight-1, has an imager developed here in South Africa by SES, which has uh, a resolution of 30 meters, 30 meters by 30 meters, it, which is perfectly adequate for a lot of agricultural and environmental applications. Uh, you, you couldn't use it for urban planning, uh, but you can use it for monitoring crops, land use, etc. So there are opportunities in private sector constellations. And don't forget, I said um, earlier, 3,000 satellites next few years. Most of those will be privately owned. We have private corporations moving into space in a very big, big way. Um, on the SANSA side, I've already mentioned cooperation on satellite construction. But there are other opportunities emerging too, which are equally exciting. Uh, they've got nothing to do with satellites, uh, but there is a real possibility that Sa Sansa could be that Sansa could be invited to p design, develop, and build experiments that could be placed on interplanetary space probes, developed and launched by the major space agencies. You know, the likes of NASA in the United States and ESA in Europe, and perhaps others. So South African experiments could be carried to Mars and beyond Mars, to the gas giants, and maybe even further out. From a technological and scientific point of view, this is incredibly exciting. A little bit of South Africa could end up in the outer solar system. So that's another opportunity. Uh, it's, it, it's, it's not a financial opportunity but it's certainly a, a major technological scientific opportunity and a great expression of confidence in South Africa's space technological capabilities by the really big players in space exploration. What we're beginning to see in the US and uh, I think soon Europe is that Earth orbit is going to be given over to the private sector and the space agencies are going to become space exploration agencies again, f going, well, when no one has gone before. Thank you.
That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.